Did you know that you can run Windows IoT Enterprise LTSC 2021 and Windows 11 IoT Enterprise on an ARM processor? Let's jump into that. Welcome to another video. I'm gonna go over today a quick review of where we stand with Windows IoT on ARM. What processors does it run on? What is it uh, cost? Um, how well is this doing? Let's jump into this and uh, peel back the onion a little bit and take a look at Windows IoT on ARM. So I recently just posted a blog out on our Arrow Microsoft website. Um, and I believe the link, yeah, the link is spelled out there at the bottom, but I will we'll place the link in the video description. So if you want to go read that blog, it's a fun little road trip back through time and sort of helps build on the fact that Microsoft has run Windows on ARM since the early 90s. So running Windows um, and even an embedded or IoT version on ARM is nothing new. That's been around for a long time. It's, uh, it's taken a different, a weird journey to get from, from back then all the way to where it is now on the current platform. And uh, in my blog, I kind of take you through that little voyage um, seeing, you know, how we ended up where we are today. And honestly, Microsoft has done a good job. Uh, they did have some failures with the IoT on ARM, which I'm noting there in the bullet point. And they did in their CE family, their Windows Compact Edition CE family back in 2013, which those products have long life cycles, so they're still available. But there never was a replacement for the CE family. Well, the replacement was Windows IoT Core, uh, and the problem with IoT Core was it only ran Windows 10 Universal apps. It would not run a Win32 app. So a lot of customers didn't want to port their apps from CE to the Windows 10 Universal app platform. And uh, thus it didn't, didn't do too well. Also, IoT Core was a free product, so it's not like you can't say it didn't do well. They, we didn't sell it. It was free. Um, but it had a lot of other issues, which I talk about in the blog. Um, the current issue today, which we'll see here in a minute, is Qualcomm editions. They don't support the long-term service channel. They only support the general availability channel of Windows 11. Um, a, not a lot of OEMs use that product. So you kind of have to wait for the LTSC version of Windows 11 on Qualcomm to really make that a viable product. But I'll talk you through that here in just a second. And then... NXP has done a fantastic job. Lots of their processors are available on the Windows 10 LTSC 2021, which is the most popular product. We had some difficulties in getting the hardware, but I think we're kind of past that now. I think that was common for a lot of products in the channel, but I think the hardware is available now. And then we have a, a positive note, super low price on the NXP platform, $25 for license. Um, that's that's definitely down in that target area we were hoping for that falls into that close to that CE, that Windows CE family. Not quite as low as CE, but certainly with a full Windows platform that supports Windows out of the box, 25 bucks, can't beat that. And then obviously Microsoft is targeting those Linux accounts, those companies that are building smaller devices that are running on Linux. They now have an option to run Windows on those smaller ARM devices now. If we go back on the ARM64 journey real quick, back to 2018, which is five years ago, you can see most of the NXP platform was based on the Windows 10 IoT Core. Um, and again, through that journey, Microsoft learned a lot of feedback there, which is, you know, we want a small footprint. We want a low cost product, um, but we want something that supports all the Windows drivers and stuff out of the box and has a, a lot of the emulation and utilities already built in, ready to go. And they've continued to prove, improve the product over time. And what people wanted back then was they didn't want Core. They wanted the full IoT Enterprise, and now that's what's available. So let's look at that. So the IoT ARM64 capabilities, huge graphics support capability now with the with the GPU drivers that are available in DirectX 11, um, all the manageability software uh, for, from third parties and tools, including iTunes, are, are available. 
app compatibility at support for Win32 apps with an x86 emulation tool. Um, so it's you, you really just have to try it out. Throw it on a, on a, a board, throw your app on, see how far you get. Um, and you, I think you'll be surprised. It actually does quite well. A lot of the drivers are included out of the box. I think you throw this on a particular board and you're going to have a full Windows system running in no time. Some third-party drivers may require a little bit more work um, at this time, but they're getting there. It's getting better for sure. And then if we compare, on the left, you have Windows 10 IoT Enterprise LTSC, and on the right, you have Windows 11 IoT Enterprise. And you can see that on the left, it's all NXP. Um, there's not a check mark there for the Qualcomm Snapdragon for the LTSC. Um, th there would be for the non-LTSC Windows 10, but that product's going end of life in October 2023, so didn't even want to include it in the presentation or the video here. On the right, you have Windows 11 IoT Enterprise with a Qualcomm logo, Qualcomm all the way down with NXP at the bottom, and I'm kind of blocking some of that, but you can see pre-production for the NXP. It's not quite available uh, on that, but it will be. And I know certainly they're going to be working for the Windows 11 LTSC that'll be out next year, later next year. So now oh, my favorite little chart that really simplifies things for you. If you're going to run micro Windows IoT on an ARM processor, the best option is today at this very moment is on the left using the Windows 10 LTSC 2021 product with 10 years of support, 10 years of life, all of these processor options available from NXP and a low cost, which I mentioned earlier. On the right, you have Windows 11 IoT Enterprise that's not an LTSC edition. So each build only gets three years of support and you have some Qualcomm Snapdragon options as well as an NXP 93 coming later uh, at the end of this year. Product's a little more expensive and it's not an LTSC edition. So clearly the winner, the best choice is the one over there on the left side. And then using the, pro the, the way the products are licensed, they're licensed based on the processor. So there's a, a what we call a processor placemat and it's filled with all these x86 processors as well as the Qualcomm and the NXP. The NXP is at the very bottom of the chart is the least expensive. They call it base. And again, least expensive option. In the middle of the chart is value, which is typically an Intel Core i3, Core i5, but you also have the Qualcomm Snapdragon series of processors and that's kind of a performance per price model, if you will. And so today there's really two part numbers. I just mentioned them on the slide before. The best one being the first part, the other, the second one, being a little more expensive and non-LTSC. So I think this will change as we get into Windows 11 LTSC next year um, and the options will just grow from there. The driver support will grow from there. Um, but I still think today is the day to start testing and uh, working on an option. We have a number of NXP eval platforms that you can buy from Arrow, um, listing all of these kits here. You can easily go out um, and order these boards right here and get with me if you need the software for the Windows IoT and load them up on one of these boards and give it a shot. See how well it does. You can certainly save yourself a lot of money if you can get your application running on one of these boards and, and uh, using the Windows IoT license. So with that, appreciate the time. Appreciate you guys watching the videos. Reach out to us, windowschamp at arrow.com. Hit the website, arrow.com slash winIoT. Subscribe to the Windows Champ YouTube channel. Thank you guys for watching.